would consider you a landless peasant. Right. You're here to be exploited by the people who own this country like livestock. You might as well be their pets, actually. You're just a kept economic unit for their benefit, not yours. Do you think people like being called peasant people? Uh, some instinctively understand that that is in fact what they are and uh, a wry smile crosses their face. Uh, other people have objected to the term, uh, but perhaps they're not aware of the noble history of peasants, as opposed to the ignoble history of the aristocracy. Derek clearly had a lot to shout about, but what actually was the Landless Peasant Party all about? It's about earth. Some people call it dirt. Uh, but it's Earth. It's about Earth and the right to live on and from it. We're the only animal on Earth that has to pay to be here. How did we manage that? Our basic need for shelter has been turned into uh, a way of making the most money possible for the property market. How did we arrange that? I think we're the landless peasant party. Vote landless no, peasant. BNP. <laughs> BNP? Wow, racist fascists. Good call. What's the difference between a peasant here and a peasant in Portugal? The difference is, we are Scottish, they are not. You're not Scottish, you're a human being. Do I say in Scotland? Do I live in Scotland? Born in Scotland? Oh, so your identity comes from the flag that waves over the land you don't own. Damn right. Don't fall for that nationalist stuff. I'm joking. I'm joking. Any attachment to a group of people smaller than humanity is a loss to us all. We're all peasants, all over the world. The entire world is owned by 15% of the population, and you're not part of it. You're not part of that group of people who own the planet. You're their livestock. You're here to take part in their economy and make money for the few people who've got all the money anyway. It is the bold and obvious truth that everything you don't do for yourself comes from the back of a peasant somewhere else. Uh, I myself grow very little of my own food. Uh, the coffee I drink is peasant in the field coffee. Uh, my laptop is a Chinese tyranny laptop. Uh, almost all of my life is actually supported by the work of other peasants. Not only by the work of other peasants, but at a cost to the planet that we can no longer uh, afford or sustain. Vote landless peasant at the general election, sir. We're the landless peasant party. Vote landless peasant, madam. There's a time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart, that you can't take part, you can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table and figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your social security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club and you ain't in it. <laughs> you and I are not in the big club. And by the way, it's the same big club they use to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. Always do what the police tell you to do. Keep on shopping and everything will be fine. This is the Majesty's Government speaking from the Ministry.
history of truth. Everything you read in the mainstream media is 100% true. Sky News brought to you by Everything is OK. Terrorism, 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 Al-Qaeda, Mohammed, terrorism, terrorism, war in Iraq, war in Afghanistan, Al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden, Bora Bora, Afghanistan, terrorism, stay scared, stay separate, terror, 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 terror is bad, you are bad, go shopping, stay scared. What you need is burgers, chips and sushi. Make your way quickly to the next processed food outlet. Do not waste good shopping time by hanging around here. Please, go back to your jobs. If you have not got a job, you are a worthless human being. You are not divine beings. What you are are consumers. Please, consume, consume, consume until we have no planet left to consume. What you need to do is buy things that you don't need. That's the best way to support the economy. Smiling is bad for the economy. Please do not smile, sir. Wipe that off your face, please. Stop it. You never see positive drug stories on the news, do you? Isn't that weird? Since most of the experiences I've had on drugs were real fucking positive. Uh, who are these morons they're finding? That's what I want to know. You know what I mean? Always that same LSD story, you've all seen it. Young man on acid, thought he could fly, jumped out of a building. What a tragedy. What a dick. Fuck him. He's an idiot. If he thought he could fly, why didn't he take off in the ground first? Check it out. You don't see ducks lined up to catch elevators to fly south. They fly from the ground, you moron. Quit ruining for everybody. How about a positive LSD story? Wouldn't that be newsworthy just once to base your decision on information rather than scare tactics and superstitions and lies? Just once. I think it would be newsworthy. Today, a young man on acid realized that all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration, that we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death. Life is only a dream, and we're the imagination of ourselves. Here's Tom with the weather. Well, what DMT is, it's a human neurotransmitter. It's the most powerful psychedelic known to man. Your own brain produces it. It's actually responsible for dreaming. When you're in heavy REM sleep and right at times of extreme stress when your body thinks it's going to die, that's when your brain pumps out the most DMT. And it's responsible for near-death experiences, UFO abductions, all that stuff. And I've done it about seven times. It's responsible for UFO abduction experiences because the idea is that an endogenous dump of DMT is that it's stored in a pineal gland. And the pineal gland is literally your third eye. It's exactly where the third eye is in Eastern mysticism, like right between the two eyebrows. And it actually has a retina and a cornea and a lens in reptiles. And it produces DMT. And DMT, even though it's the, the most powerful psychedelic drug known to man, it's in every single ecosystem all over the world. It exists in plants and grasses, and it's everywhere. I mean, it's really the craziest drug to be illegal everywhere because everyone's got it in their system. It's like everyone's holding. That was like Terrence McKenna's holding. line. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, pretty intense stuff, man. If you do it, you will talk to intelligent beings from other dimensions, for real. It's like mushrooms times a million plus aliens. <laughs> plus, <laughs> that's what it's like. And literally, I mean, it sounds, it's, it's crazier than you could possibly imagine or describe. If you take DMT, you will communicate with something. And it's, it's, it's so beyond description that me talking about it is like trying to explain a kaleidoscope to a blind man. What sucks, we were, we're lucky enough to, you know, have a life, you know? And you and you'll live your whole life not knowing anything. Yeah. yeah. When it comes down to like looking up at the stars, like what is all that? Is there other life forms? Is there other yeah. things just around you? Yeah, we never will get the answers nah. to any of that stuff. That's the craziest thing about DMT, because DMT is literally like having a meeting with God. It's like having a meeting with divine, unbelievably wise, incredibly loving energy, like whatever it is, the source of everything. And it leaves you so humbled that after that after it's over, you have a it's like literally like you're still you, you still look like you, you still wear the same clothes clothes you are but you're not really you anymore I mean you literally have been changed you know you have experienced something that very few humans experience and the thought to me that people can go through their entire lives and not know about this is an incredible waste of time it's like your life could be so much more positive and so much more interesting and fascinating and you you would be so much more humble and aware of what you you really are and where you really stand if you just have this experience
I'm not interested in anything that messes me up. I don't think, I'm not interested in anything that gives me brain damage or anything that makes me, you know, addicted to it. I just, I'm only interested in things that, that can alter my state of consciousness for the, the better.